So I'm just going to do the series for metatarsalgia. We're going to start on the great toe with our two sesamoid bones. And we check the sesamoids in long, that's the medial one. That's flexor halicus longus, and there's the lateral one. And then we come across to the second plantar plate. So we're looking at our MTP joint. Phalanx is on the left, metatarsals on the right. And I'm going to be dorsiflexing that toe. So I'm pulling up, and as you do, you move the transducer up and over so we're sort of angling down onto the joint this way so that the plantar plate is nice and horizontal with the top of the screen. So a typical central image looks like this. You can measure the fibrocartilaginous structure there. We're not so much interested in the bit that's back over uh, at the proximal attachment although it can detach from there. So by dorsiflexing we're making sure that that plantar plate is attached to the phalanx on the left at this point. So it's anchored. And then we need to assess it on the medial side. So you slide towards the big toe and then angle back at the side of the plantar plate. And if you're doing that correctly, you won't see too much tendon in the way. So this is the medial aspect of the plantar plate. And then we come across to towards the third toe and angle back at the second toe and we can see the lateral aspect of the plantar plate. Things can be vastly different from medial to lateral, so it's important to not just examine it centrally. And then at this point, we can also take a transverse image. So when you're on the phalanx, we see the bone is curved like this. When you're on the metatarsal, it's rounded in the opposite direction. So this is our metatarsal. We can see the flexor tendon on top, and I'll just get you a good picture of the plantar plate. Alright, so then we move across to the third toe. So this is the third plantar plate, and a good image looks like this. The top surface of the plantar plate is parallel with the top of the screen. And then we move towards the second toe, angling back at the side, so we can see the medial aspect of the plantar plate. Moving to look at the lateral aspect of that plantar plate. So they're the main toes that the plantar plate injuries occur, but we can include the fourth as well. And you can see as we move towards the fifth, the plantar plates progressively become slightly thinner. So there's no set normal range for plantar plates. It's just a matter of examining them in comparison with the other side and deciding whether uh, it's flush with the bone. So most normal plantar plates the top surface is in line with the phalanx so that you can draw one straight line across. The abnormal ones bow out. So that's what we do and then we do a web space assessment. So we'll change transducers for the web space assessment. We're going to start with the web space assessment now. So this is a normal web space, so the nerve is very, very tiny. And I'll point it out for you. But it's this tiny little structure diving deep. So I'm using my finger here on the skin surface. So this is the skin surface of the dorsal side. And the, we're on a 12-5 transducer. So a good place to start is to set, set yourself up so you've got this little mountain, two mountains in the middle of the screen and then you set your focal zone about a centimetre deep to that. Gradually slide towards the next toe so you drop into that web space and you can see there the dorsal pressure that pushes that little nerve up and out towards the plantar surface. So that's a normal nerve but when it's abnormal sometimes it's difficult to distinguish bursitis from Morton's neuroma. So what we do is that what's called a Mulder's compression or a Mulder's squeeze. So we grab the um, great toe and the fifth metatarsal and we squeeze the web spaces together. So I'm going to do the Mulder's squeeze with the transducer on. We're going to squeeze all the toes together and what that does is pops the nerve towards the plantar surface and the bursa towards the dorsal surface. So then you continue over, so this is the third metatarsal, we're moving towards the fourth, so we're now in the third web space. 
that's a good image there. So you can just see the web space is free of any bursitis or any nerve. This is the molders squeeze then. So now that's sort of popping the nerve up towards the surface. And the nerve is this part here. And so on. So you move towards the next web space. The, at the end of a four foot assessment, it's a good idea to look dorsally as well. So we'll do that now. Don't forget the first web space. So the first web space, you can see the little bursa in there and the nerve over the top. So the nerve's very, very tiny. This is the interdigital nerve here. So it always starts to dive deep. Um, can you pop your foot flat? So a metatarsalgia, we sometimes look for Morton's geromas dorsally as well. So obviously you're going to set yourself up with the camera overlapping the crease between the toes, the web space. So you'll want to see the joint. So once you can see the joint, you move your camera into the web space. And at this point, you can slide your finger underneath to try and push that web space up towards the camera. And I'll just move into the next web space, which is slightly wider. So moving your finger underneath, you can see you're compressing that um, fat pad up into the web space and the nerve instead of diving away from you is going to be coming up towards the camera now so we're seeing the nerve coming up through here. Now it's kinked because of that transverse metatarsal ligament which is running between all the toes and this is the dorsal interossei muscle. The other reason we do a dorsal assessment is to look for stress fracture so it's just a matter of examining the shaft of each metatarsal. There's a nice smooth bone surface. Stress fractures normally just form a little periosteal reaction which is like a hypoechoic rind of tissue adjacent to the bone which lights up when we use a colour doppler assessment. So colour doppler on a nice low scale you can see increased vascularity adjacent to the bone if there's the beginnings of a stress fracture. And finally, on the dorsal joint, we just look at the shape of the metatarsal head on each joint and look for an effusion. You can see the extensor tendons intact and normal over the top. And that's a standard four foot assessment. Finishing with the great toe there with the extensor colicus longus over the top.